Senator Sean Nienau's proposal is intended to promote financial integrity. He's here to talk a bit more about his bill. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you for having me. So, Senator, let's begin with the crux of your legislation. It has three different bullets, an independent audit, data, and making sure there isn't really a conflict of interest with the entity that sets the rates. So, if you can, explain in layman's terms what each of these bullets is intended to do. Sure, sure. Well, right now, um, uh, the term we use is, is there's a black box. The state pours money into it uh, for these programs. The, the HMOs take that money and then they manage the care for these public plans. But we really don't know what's going on inside of that. Uh, we get uh, more than a dozen reports and audits and, and, and such, but the question is, do they, do they really amount to much? Because the, the, under, the question is the underlying data. Is it really solid, good usable data that gets us good information, or is it just data? Uh, we don't even know if it's uh, correct or incorrect or if it's the data we should be looking at. Uh, for example, the, the General Accountability Office at the federal level, uh, they did a review of, kind of like a, the legislative auditor here. Uh, they, they did a review and did a report uh, for CMS who certifies uh, the rates that are paid for these and basically said they have no way to know if what they're certifying is good or bad or otherwise. And so what do you intend to do to try to clear up some of this confusion? Well, the, the three bullet points that you said, uh, one is a third party independent audit by people that really know what they're doing. They have the expertise in this. And there are entities that do this across the country. They work for the FBI, they work for the General Accountability Office, they do forensic accounting to dig down, really uh, take a look at what's going on to make sure everything's right and tight and something's not amiss. Or being manipulated or, or whatever. But in order to do that, you have to have access to what we call the granular encounter data. Uh, you know, if Mrs. Jones goes in uh, because she had a broken leg, I don't need to know that this Mrs. Jones went in to get the broken leg fixed, but I do need to know how many Mrs. Joneses went in for broken legs, how many Mr. Joneses went in for gallstone surgeries, and what all of that cost so that you have the underlying data, a good base of information to work with, and, and for uh, the outside auditor to review everything. And then the third point really, uh, it, I, I liken it to if you were to go into court and you're the defendant and you found out that your lawyer is also the lawyer for the plaintiff. That's a bad idea. And that's what the third bullet point is. It has to do with our actuary, uh, the company that sets the rates. Uh, there's no prohibition in law right now for our actuary to be the actuary for the plans. And the plans can benefit or you know, lose money based on, on where those rates are set. So we should each have our own actuary, just like in a court of law, you should have your own lawyer. And it was recently reported that there was about $30 million in overpayments to UCARE, which were paid back. That's one of the HMOs in question. And you stated in the news conference that essentially you don't know if there is a problem, but you don't know if there isn't one either. So do you intend to flesh out whether or not there really is a problem, or is this intended to kind of put any potential problems aside and just prevent them in the future? Sure, well, to really boil it down into a soundbite, uh, last year we were looking at this, and what I tell people is last year something didn't smell right to me. This year a whole lot more information came out without going into details. I can see smoke. So now the question is, is the house on fire or isn't it? If you were in your home and something started to smell funny and then you saw the smoke, you'd be checking it out. And it, you might find out that it's the neighbor's house that was on fire, and then you're relieved but you might find out it's your house that's on fire and you want to get that put out right away. That's the point where we're at here at the state of Minnesota. Is the house on fire? If so, put it out. Make sure that whatever caused that fire, that problem goes away. And, oh, go ahead. Oh, and, and if it's not, then we know that it's not and we've done our due diligence. Okay, Representative Michelle Bachman did state repeatedly during that news conference that if these overpayments are happening here in Minnesota, they're likely happening in other states with larger populations. So if that's the case, what do you hope happens? Well, my focus is specific to Minnesota, but the Congresswoman is looking at what I've proposed here for Minnesota and elevating that up one step and saying, if it's good for Minnesota, it's good for the rest of the country as well. It's, it's a relatively minimal cost in the perspective of uh, the money we spend on these programs to ensure that everything is right and tight and legitimate. Uh, for example, in Minnesota, the estimate I've received is that out of our pocket, the state of Minnesota, maybe cost us about $300,000. The feds would match that, so it would be a total about twice that price. But to put that in context, the HHS budget, HHS budget is about $11 billion. So $700,000 is a, a fraction of a fraction of a percent of that budget. How do you hope your legislation complements or supplements whatever 
will be done at a federal level? Uh, well, I think they probably would mirror each other. More than likely, if uh, we were to pass this legislation and the federal legislation would pass as well, our legislation would probably just put us in compliance. All right, Minnesotans want to know, are their dollars safe, their tax dollars safe in particular? Do you think your legislation will indeed promote financial integrity in this area? Absolutely. That's the whole point, transparency and accountability. Okay. Senator Nino, thanks for coming on and discussing your legislation. We'll track it, and we appreciate your time. All right. Thank you. Have a good day.